Good morning from the Rooksterin Observatory. Uh, this is a short tutorial on how to use sharp cap for uh, solar imaging. I assume you have installed sharp cap 4.0 and uh, you have launched it. I'm going to start with uh, the live view uh, which allows you to toggle between uh, live view and single frame. You want to go with live view. Uh, up to file and uh, sharp cap settings and uh, this is where the fun begins uh, general automatically restore last camera used <clears throat> not, that, not that it matters display in night vision I prefer the colors of night vision and use graphics hard acceleration where available saving allows you to specify the file format and where you want to save things. I use for my defaults AVI for the preferred video format and still format. I use JPEG because I don't plan to post process. <coughs> Otherwise you can go with diff or fits if you want to do more processing afterwards. And the Bayer patterns uh, if you're writing the raw fits files. I go with normal which supports uh, Pix Insight and Big Sky Stacker. Hardware. Uh, the mount is the only one I would worry about right now. And uh, I'm using a SynScan uh, AZ GTI for my solar telescope, for my long telescope. If you're using the 8SE, then uh, you just select CPWI and uh, that allows you to uh, control the telescope directly from uh, sharp cap. File names, whatever you want to call them, wherever you want to store them. Uh, you can leave the default and uh, that works well. In my case, I chose to store them uh, under a captures file, captures folder, so I find them. Memory, this one is uh, important. You are limited to one gigabyte for uh, high speed frame cache and one gigabyte for stacking and display. Forget the live stacking for a moment. Uh, the high speed frame cache is limited to one gigabyte uh, unless you pay for the Sharp Cap Pro license. Uh, I decided to pay for that license uh, $18 per year because uh, I need to go well beyond one gigabytes when I'm capturing the International Space Station. It's a very short pass and I'm uh, taking uh, pictures at one four thousandths of a second at a high frame rate. So I need the cache. One gigabytes will not cut it. Um, other than that, uh, there are other things that you get with the license as well that I'll touch on later on. Plate solving. That one I love about uh, uh, sharp cap you got it without the pro uh, I installed Astro Tortilla and it automatically finds the Sigwin astrometry program that Astro Tortilla calls and uh, this is where you can uh, adjust uh, the star detection noise threshold is the only thing uh, worth adjusting and uh, when we get to actual captures the Plate solving, you just click on uh, one button there and uh, it will solve the sky and then it will synchronize the mount and recenter the target all automatically. Uh, that is what allows me to hit the International Space Station at full flight by uh, waiting for it at the pre-designated location using plate solving, knowing that I'm exactly where it's going to be. And then uh, start uh, sharp cap to grab about a minute worth of frames at very high speed. Uh, you probably do not need plate solving to find the sun, but uh, that is one of the things that uh, I really, really, really like about uh, sharp cap. Polar alignment. I have not used it. Uh, I'm extremely happy with the all-star polar alignment that uh, Celestron provides with their telescope. Right now, my uh, big mount, the CGX mount with an 11-inch Edge HD, 
uh, has a polar al alignment error of less than a minute in each direction. So I'm very, very happy with it. Guiding. You can uh, link PHD2 to sharp cap so that it will feed it. And uh, again, if you're using a sharp cap at night and you want to do the guiding through sharp cap to PHD2, that is one way to do it. Uh, logging, have not used it. And I do not use startup scripts. So these are the settings, uh, default settings that I use for sharp cap. Now, top line, camera, capture, view, tools, sequencer, scripting. Camera, most certainly. In this case, I'm using, uh, for solar imaging, I'm using the 120MC uh, high speed. I like it. I prefer it over uh, monochrome. So I'm going to just select it. There we go. And uh, let's swing all the way to the right. The camera control panel is what comes up. Uh, RAW 8, it is an 8-bit camera. Uh, that is the maximum resolution. It's a 1280 by 960. Uh, binning output format. I've been using AVI uh, just for convenience because I can upload an AVI file directly to uh, YouTube and not worry about it. Uh, if there's a debayer or not. Camera control. I've no problem using auto, uh, especially when I'm uh, tracking the sun. But I found that by setting the gain to 90 for solar observing, maximum frame rate, uh, no flipping. You can flip horizontal, vertical, both or none in this case. 100% uh, on turbo USB, high speed mode on. Then it becomes a matter of, uh, I use the quick picks a lot for solar imaging, 160th. Uh, usually allows me to see the, the limb, the edge of the sun for solar flares and uh, a, a lot shorter than that, uh, closer to one millisecond, uh, one one thousandth, when I'm looking at the surface of the sun, looking for sunspots uh, or filaments uh, on the sun itself. So that, that is the camera control. Image controls, uh, that's going to be a trial and error with your camera. I found that uh, putting brightness at maximum and white balance at 15 uh, for red and white balance for blue at 70 uh, gives me a, a color with which I am very comfortable, a color of the sun uh, with which I'm comfortable. Let me see if I can pull it. That is the color that I get by default when I uh, use those settings. And uh, this is an unprocessed single shot for all intents and purposes. Uh, let's go back. Shape control, scope, sorry, scope control. Uh, if you click on connected, and uh, right now my driver is not connected. That allows you to control the telescope from here by going uh, up, down, right, left. I like very much the uh, search function there uh, that goes in a uh, helical mode or whatever you want to call it mode. Uh, it searches in uh, increasing size circles for the target. And I've used that a lot to find the sun. I just click on it and wait for the sun to show up uh, inside my uh, field of view. And then uh, there is a circle that shows up here as part of scope control. Uh, and if you click on it, that is the plate solving. Histogram, adjust it to what you like. And uh, we go back to uh, the camera controls that allow you to adjust the histogram to where you're comfortable with. Uh, miscellaneous controls, 
you can select what is the maximum brightness and maximum exposure that you'll get and maximum gain if you go with automatic. Uh, I don't use these because I don't usually use auto up there. Uh, Pre-processing, if you're subtracting darks or flats. And uh, that is basically where most of the work is done. Capture is fairly straightforward. You can either do it manually with a start capture or you can use quick capture. I use quick capture a lot. And this is where you can choose either how many frames you're capturing or how many seconds you're capturing and then it will stop on its own. That is pretty much all I use. Uh, I'm gonna take you to the tools for a moment. Big histogram, if you want one. I have used the live stack, but not on solar images. I have not tried on solar, I've used it uh, at night. The plate solve selection there. The other one that I use a lot on my big scope is the focus assistant. Uh, I can put a star in the middle of the field of view and then let it focus automatically by using uh, either multi-star, full width half, uh, whatever the M stands for measurement. Uh, I use the FWHM measurement usually. And for uh, planets, sun, moon, planets and surfaces, I use the Fourier detail detection. Uh, that is if you have a, an automatic focuser or a focus motor that can be driven directly by sharp cap. Feature tracking. Have not had much luck using it, but in theory, uh, sharp cap can stay on a target and do minimal guiding uh, to make sure the target does not get out of the field of view. Have not had luck with the solar framing assistant or uh, stellar photo photometry estimation. These are both new and they're not in the, in the manual yet. But the feature tracking, I've used it. It works nicely. You can track either uh, features on Jupiter or Saturn or the sun. And uh, that allows the telescope to uh, follow the target and not let it get out of uh, field of view. Uh, de -de -de -de. Uh, there is uh, a uh, reticle here that you can use, and I've used it. And then there is a zoom, so you can adjust the zoom of your picture as needed uh, if you want to zoom in. Uh, I've done a lot of zooming in on uh, features of the sun. Or oh, you can just leave it at auto. Uh, target name. You can put the name of the target and that becomes part of the file name, or you can choose uh, the defaults, uh, Sun and Moon and Venus and Mars and Saturn and so on. And uh, if you're capturing uh, dark frames, then uh, you can add that to the name as well instead of light frames. That is all for a quick intro. I shall wrap up that uh, brief video and post it. Uh, I wish you the best in uh, using sharp cap for uh, solar imaging. Uh, so long from the Rooster Observatory and I'll be remiss if I close this presentation uh, without playing my uh, theme music. <laughs>